Hello, Filipino School of New York and New Jersey. I am Maxi Villavicencio Pulliam. Thank you so much for having me and for giving me the space to introduce my book to you, Fierce Filipina. It's inspired by the life of Glaceria Marella de Villavicencio. She was my great great grandmother who contributed a lot to the Philippine Revolution. Um, but she's an unknown hero. And so I'm so grateful that I had the time at the beginning of COVID during the lockdown to do some research and put together a story that I can now share with all of you. So if I may, I'd love to share an excerpt with you from the book and hope that after my short reading, you do what you can to help me promote the book, buy the book on Amazon. It's also available on Barnes and Noble. Uh, donate some to your local libraries, give copies away to your, as I call them, fellow Filipinos. Uh, I really hope that this book serves as a source of inspiration for both you, your families, and of course, everyone around you. So I'm gonna start with this page. Glaceria developed a deep curiosity about the different people in the Philippines. She often wondered, are social structures set in stone? Why are my friends considered equal to me? Can they all land one day too? She yearned to move to the big city of Manila to learn more. At 12 years old, Glaceria begged her grandfather to allow her to leave to all to attend Santa Catalina College. Sebastian agreed. He knew that Glaceria had an independent spirit and he believed that a good education would prepare her to take over the family estate one day. Santa Catalina College in Manila was at Intramuros, meaning within a walled fortress. Intramuros was also the headquarters of the Spanish colonial government. Glaceria learned in school that the Spaniards first arrived in the Philippines in 1521. Outside of school, she witnessed Filipino people being disrespected and abused by the Spanish colonial authorities. She was so shocked that her body froze. It was then that Glaceria learned the truth. The truth was that the Spanish colonial government and the Spanish Catholic Church wanted to remain in control of the Philippines without competition from the country's people. So the Spaniards falsely claimed that native Filipinos could not have equal rights based on the color of their skin. This untruth was the reason why Glaceria's friends could not own land. Glaceria knew that this was wrong. She realized that she could either sit still and enjoy the perks of her light skin or stand up and create change. For the first time, Glaceria's breath deepened and her heart began to glow. Her inner voice said, Fierce are those who are brave. Fierce are those who are strong. Fierce are those who stand up for what's right, even when things go wrong. She knew what she needed to do. She needed to be a fierce Filipina. As she began to think of ways to create change, Glaceria received news of her eldest sister's death. She returned to Ta'al to manage her family's estate, just as her grandfather had wanted. Upon her return to Ta'al, Glaceria reunited with her friends. They were so happy that she was back. While they were out in the town together, Glaceria met Eulalio Villavicencio, an illustrato from Ta'al. He tried his best to woo her, but Glaceria was unwilling to settle. She only wanted to marry someone who could match her passion for the Filipino people. Still, her friends kept telling her, Alang Ariang, Don Eulalio is such a catch. 
give him a chance. Over time, Glaceria became drawn to Eulalio's warmth, kindness, and his ideas on how to separate the Philippines from the Spanish rule. They married in October 1871 and had the grandest wedding that Batangas had ever seen. After the festivities, Eulalio surprised Glaceria with a new home in Taal named the Villa Vicencio Wedding Gift House. And that's the wedding gift house. In 1872, word spread that the Spanish colonial authorities had strangled three Filipino Catholic priests to death for subversion. Their names were Mariano Gomez, Jose Burgos, and Jacinto Zamora. Glaserio and Eulalio were outraged. The priests may have been unsuccessful in overthrowing the Spanish government, but their fight was not over. The couple vowed to continue the priest's work. Glaceria and Eulalio were active revolutionaries, even while raising their six children. The couple hosted secret meetings at their main residence, Casa Villa Vicencio, where they plotted the first strategies of the revolution. Eulalio joined the Katipunan, or the Philippine Revolutionary Society, and Glaceria led the efforts of transporting, storing, and hiding firearms, ammunition, and secret documents. The Spanish authorities often raided their home, but never found a thing. The couple decided to host Spanish generals as overnight guests next door at the wedding gift house to reduce the Spaniards' suspicions. In 1890, oh, this way. In 1892, Eulalio traveled by ship to Hong Kong to hand deliver 18,000 pesos to exiled Filipino nationalist, Dr. Jose Rizal. The money paid for Dr. Rizal's patriotic work, including a newspaper called La Solidaridad, or The Solidarity. The newspaper advocated for Filipino priests instead of Spanish friars, freedom of assembly and speech, and equal rights before the law. When Eulalio returned to Taal, he brought back an ivory dagger from Dr. Rizal to Glaceria and copies of La Solidaridad. The couple quietly passed out the newspaper to other Filipinos in Batangas. Dr. Rizal eventually returned to the Philippines, this time exiled to Dabitan on the island of Mindanao. Still, Spanish friars accused him of starting the Philippine Revolution, which began in Manila on August 23, 1896, by the Katipunan. Dr. Rizal was sentenced to death and publicly executed by a firing squad on December 30th, 1896. Shortly after, the Spanish colonial authorities confirmed Eulalio's revolutionary activities. They arrested and imprisoned him in the old Bilibid prison in Manila. Glaceria traveled to Manila to fight for Eulalio's release. The authorities used her visit as an opportunity to bargain with her. They offered to release Eulalio, but only if Glaceria revealed the secrets of the Katipunan. Glaceria's breath deepened and her heart began to glow. Her inner voice said, fierce are those who are brave, fierce are those who are strong, fierce are those who stand up for what's right, even when things go wrong. She knew what she needed to do. She needed to be a fierce Filipina. So that's all I'm going to share with you today. Uh, you gotta just get the book and see what happens. And also I skipped some beginning parts. So take a look at that too, once you actually have the book in hand. I wanna thank you again for having me from Los Angeles. This has been so fun. Uh, please reach out. You can find us on Instagram at Fierce Filipina. Follow us, share our profile buy the book, share our book, feel free to comment and message me. 
Uh, and lastly, I do want to just leave you with this one tidbit recommendation. I found that it was such a blessing for me to learn about the roots of my family. And if there is a way for you to do the same, do it. Do it alongside your family members, your parents, your grandparents. Ask them for any stories that they might have and uh, really relish in your family history and figure out maybe what sparks a passion within you and if that has any historical context to the family members that came before you. Again, I'm Maxi Villavicencio Pulliam, author of Fierce Filipina. Thank you so much.